Okay, so now I'm going to cover some ways to make your line following program even faster than its current slow method. As you can see from the video, the last video, a line following program that's just done in the basic way of two states goes fairly slowly. So here's a way to make your program faster. We can now have three states when it's over dark, when it's over light, and when it's over a gray value, which would be right down the middle between dark and light. So now there's going to be three actions. We're going to go veering to the right, veering to the left, and going straight. So this program would look something like, come, you know, we're over dark, so we veer left. Now we're over gray, so we go straight, but we're going to be a little crooked. Now we're over light, we veer right. We're over gray again, so we go straight, but we go a little crooked, and now we're over dark again. Okay, because we're going straight more, and turning less, our program's going to go faster. So we can see that from this little video here, where we're going straight more often. We're more centered over this center line. Okay, so that makes your robot go straight. Okay, or faster. Well, we could take this idea and make it even faster. We could have five states of very dark, dark, gray, light, and very light, where we turn very much to the left, only a little to the left, go straight, only a little to the right, or a lot to the right, okay? So this leads us to kind of guessing at something that ends up being a fact, which is the more states you have in your line follower, the smoother it will follow the line, which tends to mean that it's going to follow the line faster. So how many states can we have? Well, it turns out that there's a way with math to make it so that you have as many states for your line follower as there are possible light sensor readings. And you don't have to put an if statement in for every possible state. Okay, so that's even better. And this leads us to something called proportional line following. This is where there's a little bit of math in here, but it's you can do it, and I'll work you through it and show you why it works. Okay. So proportional line following, before we start discussing it, we need to define something called error. An error we define to be the threshold. Remember from the first video, the threshold is the dividing line between dark and light. The threshold minus the actual sensor value. So what it's really error is what it's supposed to be minus what it really is. Okay. So if your threshold is 50, the error is in the range negative 50 to 50. Okay, so you can either be really far on one side or really far on the other side or anywhere in the middle. Then you make your motor power proportional to error. And we remember from math class that proportional to means you have your error times some constant, and then that's going to be the motor power. Okay, so I have a graph to make it look a little bit easier on this next page. Okay. This is your error versus your sensor value. Okay, so this is assuming your threshold is 50. So this is your sensor value, and this is your error. Okay, so when the sensor reads 0, your error is positive 50. Okay, because your it's what it's supposed to be minus what it really is. What it's supposed to be is 50 minus what it actually is is 0, so you get 50. Okay, at 25, you're going to have it's supposed to be 50 minus 25, and you get 25 back. At 50, your error is zero because you're where you're supposed to be. 75, you have an error of negative 25, and at 100, at reading 100, you have an error of negative 50. Okay, so that's the way that the error is going to look. And now we can think about this as how far you need to turn. Okay, so when it's all the way over here, you need to turn left a lot, and when you're all the way over here, you actually need to turn left a negative amount. So when you think about that kind of, you're turning left negative, so that's like the opposite of turning left. You're actually turning right over here. Right here you're going straight, okay? So you can kind of see more left, more left, more left, more left, as left as you can go, and more right, more right, more right, and then as right as you can go. Make sense? Okay, so now we're going to have our program idea. Okay, it's a little bit more difficult than the other program, but I'll walk you through it, and you can do it. It's possible. 
So you have your error, which is threshold minus sensor value. So you're going to store that in what's called a variable. Okay. Then you're going to set the power of your left motor to your target power, which this is basically ensuring that you're actually moving somewhere. This wasn't included in the motor power graph that I just showed you. This is basically going to ensure that you're always moving straight somewhere, moving forward. This will Typically, you set this to about 50, and that's a good value, 50 or 45. Okay, You're moving quite a bit faster than 30. And then this is where the error comes in. Okay, You're going to have some constant, which we call kp, and you're going to multiply that by the current error. You're going to add that to the target power, and you get left motor. Okay, So as your error gets bigger, your left motor power gets bigger, and you start veering to the right. Okay. And for the right motor, it's the same thing, except we've made this negative over here. And the reason why is because we want the right motor to be going the opposite direction of the left motor. Okay. We repeat this over and over and over again. Okay. So now I'm going to show you how to make this in NXTG and walk you through that because this one's a little bit more difficult to do in NXTG than the previous one. Okay, so I'll see you in the next video.